Finding your colour season can feel completely overwhelming. There are so many different elements to consider and you have no idea how to define your own features. However, it doesn't have to be that difficult. In this video, I'm going to break down the key concepts that you need to understand in order to find your colour season and your best colours. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a style analyst and on this channel, we find our style by finding ourselves. Twelve Seasons is a method used to categorise different colour palettes that we find within our features and their corresponding wider palette which we can use to enhance our features with our clothing. And the idea is that you echo your features in your clothing to create a kind of harmony. The 1980s book Colour Me Beautiful by Carol Jackson really made this concept popular. I discovered this a couple of years ago and it launched a two year obsession which completely changed my life. And the cool thing about Colour Seasons is it's all objective. There is no season or set of features which is better than another. So it's a really helpful way to put your features into context and narrow down the things you buy so that the things you buy you're going to love for life. First step to finding your season is to define your features. You want to look at your natural features, nothing that's dyed, you want to look at yourself bare-faced in natural light. You also want to look at how your features change over time, so that could mean from a baby until now, it could mean across the year, so some people's skin gets darker and lighter across the year, same with hair, so you want an overall picture. Let's look at warm or cool. Blue is cool and yellow is warm. The closer a colour is to blue, the cooler it is, and the closer to yellow, the warmer the colour is. Sometimes you'll hear people saying something like, there's no such thing as a warm blue, and that's actually not true. There is a warm and cool version of each colour. So very quickly, a greeny yellow is cool and an orangey yellow is warm. A bluey green is cool, a yellowy green is warm. A bluish purple is cool and a reddish purple is warm. A pinky red is cool, an orangey red is warm. A chocolatey brown is cool and a rusty brown is warm. A slate grey is cool and a mushroom grey is warm. Well within that there are nuances, so grey is inherently more cool than it is warm, pink is more cool than it is warm, orange is more warm than it is cool, but you can still have a sliding scale of each colour. Start to think of colours as shades rather than words. It isn't just brown, it's honey brown. Sometimes the colour can sit between brown and orange and you can't easily define it as either. So forget about words, think about the shade itself. What are neutral tones? A neutral green would be a colour that is slap bang in the middle between yellow and blue. It doesn't lean yellow, it doesn't lean blue, it's right in the middle. Green and red are often talked about as neutral colours, but they're only neutral when they're true green or red, so slap bang in the middle of the colours they're next to. Brown, beige, grey are also considered neutral especially outside of colour season context, but they're not really, they all they tend to lean either warm or cool. How can you tell just by looking at a colour in isolation if it's cool or warm? It honestly just takes a little bit of practice, you can go through your own clothes and try and define is this a greeny yellow, an orangey yellow and so on. So how do we apply this to our features? Now it's not as easy as are you blue or are you yellow because most of us typically don't tend to have those colours in our features. There are a few features that you're looking at, you're looking at your hair and that incorporates your eyebrows, your head hair, your eyelashes, your eyes and you want to look at the several different colours that are in your eyes, your skin that incorporates this skin and also your lip skin, and your features don't exist in a vacuum. Just because you have cool blue eyes doesn't necessarily make you a cool season. Just because you have slightly peachy skin doesn't necessarily mean you're warm toned. It's about the whole picture. You can think of it a bit like a point system if you like. So hair, for example, would have more points because it's a bigger portion of your features. Or for example, you might have one quite small feature which is very extreme. So for example, you might have very bright green eyes and that would sway your features extremely. So redheads, for example, are almost always spring or autumn because they have so much warmth there in their hair. What if you have no features which particularly stand out as warm or cool? Does that make you neutral? Well, the thing is we all lean one way or another. The odds of all of us having features which are exactly in the middle, everything, hair, skin, eyes, all of it, slap bang in the middle, is very unlikely. Most neutral types, so these are essentially, it's not an extreme feature, or their warmth or their coolness is not extreme enough to consider it a contributing factor to their season. They tend to be on the edge of a season, so they tend to be either light or dark, soft, bright. So let's look at light or dark. This I think is the easiest one to understand. Dark is closer to black, light is closer to white. So this, for example, is a light versus dark green of the same hue, and a light versus dark pink. Just as you can have more neutral features that sit in in the middle of cool and warm, the same applies to light and dark, so you can be medium. If it sits between the darkest version of that colour and the lightest version of that colour, so the closest that colour gets to black and the closest that colour gets to white, it's medium. So your features, the closer a feature is to black, the more you would consider it dark. The closer to white, the lighter you would consider that feature. So again, you want to consider your hair, your eyes, your skin. Most people's hair is a shade of brown, so there's a lot of nuance in light and dark. The lightest shade of brown that you typically see, I would consider light, and the dark 
darkest shade of brown I would consider dark. So there's a huge scope there. What about bright or soft? This I think is the most complicated concept of the three. Colors which are soft mean colors that are closer to gray or brown. So they're a muddy version of that color. And a clear version means it doesn't have gray or brown running through it. Soft colors have a certain dustiness. Now it can be quite difficult because light and dark and soft and bright are inherently connected. So as a color gets softer, it gets mixed with gray. So it sort of inherently becomes a bit darker. And as you kind of remove the gray from a color, it also gets a little bit lighter. So for example, this is a clear pink. This is a soft pink. This is a clear blue. This is a softer blue, clear orange, a softer orange, clear red, and a softer red. Black and white are also considered clear or bright. Now there are two elements to consider with the brightness of your features. So you first of all want to look at the brightness or the softness of each individual feature. So for example, for redheads, how close to orange is your hair or how close to brown is your hair? For brunettes, how close to a light brown is it? How close to black is it? For your eyes, are they a very clear blue or are they more grayish? Are they clear green or are they more hazel? The second element you need to consider is contrast. So the level of contrast between your features. So for example, you might have very bright skin, very bright hair, but it's all very low contrast because it's all the same tone. So for example, a very light, bright, cool blonde, very light skin, which is very bright and clear, very translucent, but you're therefore low contrast because your features all kind of melt together. There's no strong, stark difference between what's going on. And that would mean bright probably isn't one of your main features. So for example, the fairy tale figure of Snow White would be very high contrast because the dark color of her hair contrasts with the light color of her skin, but also she tends to have very bright red lips. So it's a very clear color rather than a very soft color. So you have all of that combination would make her bright. So step two is to order your features. So you need to find which of your features is dominant. So now you've gone through each of your features, your hair, your skin, your eyes, you've managed to label it light, dark. And then hopefully at the end of each one, you need to say, generally, do I seem light or dark? Do I seem cool or warm? Do I seem bright or soft? on the whole and write that down. So to know your dominant feature, which one stands out to you first? Which one was easy to you? Which one doesn't really feel like a question? So just to clarify what we're ranking, light and dark, cool and warm, soft or bright. We're trying to find which of these different categories defines our features the most. If your features lean very black, very gray, and only a little cool, soft and dark are more dominant for you than cool and warm. Maybe it's easier to think of it the other way around. So which is neutral for you? So for example, for me, the softness or brightness is what I'm in the middle for. So you should have some idea now if your first one could be light, your second one cool, your third one soft. Now you need to match your order with the 12 seasons. So firstly, let's look at the four main groups. So summers are cool, light, and soft. Winters are cool, dark, and bright. Springs are warm, light, and bright. Autumns are warm, bright, and dark. So first of all, have a quick think, which one do you fit in here? And what if you don't fit one of those perfectly? That's why we have the 12 seasons. So for example, if you're cool, light, or bright, you don't perfectly fit into one of the um, groups that I just said. So, so dark winters are dark, cool, and soft for a winter. And now that's phrasing that I'm gonna use all the way through this. So when I say that, it means that you're on the softer end of the winters. Soft can't be considered an important factor for you. It's not something that, which particularly defines your features. We wouldn't look at you and necessarily say, you are so soft in your features. Not that that tends to ever come up in conversation, but you know what I mean. But you are on the softer end of your category. True winters are cool, medium dark, medium bright. Bright winters are bright, cool, and light for winter. Bright springs are bright, warm, and dark for spring. True springs are warm, medium bright, medium light. Light springs are light, warm, and soft for spring. Light summers are light, cool, and bright for summer. True summers are cool, medium soft, medium light. Soft summers are soft, cool, and dark for summer. Soft autumns are soft, warm and light for an autumn. True autumns are warm, medium soft, medium dark, and dark autumns are dark, warm and bright for an autumn. Now don't worry if that all seemed quite intense. There's a lot of information there. Go back, watch it a couple of times, write some notes. To make that just a little bit more simple, the true types are the most obviously cool or warm. This is their dominant feature. The light or dark types have their darkness or lightness as their dominant features, and they might be more neutral for cool and warm. The soft or bright types have their softness or brightness as their dominant feature, and they might be neutral, cool, or warm. And you might wanna look at this the other way around, so which one is neutral for you? So for example, for me, softness or brightness, I'm in the middle. True types tend to be medium for everything, except cool or warm. Light or dark types tend to be more neutral and cool and warm, as do soft and bright types. This is the hardest bit, and look, it might take some time. It's okay to gain new information, new evidence as you go, and realize you might be something 
something else. So for example, as my hair grows out, I'm beginning to think I might not be a light summer. I think I actually might be a true summer. Does that mean my season's changed? No, it just means that I have new information and I'm adjusting my assessment based on that. And what if you're in the middle for everything? I mean, statistically, this is unlikely and there isn't a season name for it, but the principles would apply. So essentially you would just dress medium everything. So you dress medium soft, medium in between cool and warm, um, in between light and dark. So here are some key questions that I'm gonna quickly answer for you. How do you know if a color looks good on you or if you just like the color? Try not to look at the color, try to look at your face. So the color literally reflects off your features. So look at your skin, look at your under eyes, look at your hair and think about harmony. Use your logic. It's okay to get in your emotions about a color and how you feel. And I would say, take that out of the equation if you're starting to get stressed about it. I've found through trial and error that color seasons actually is incredibly important to me in my wardrobe. I tried to buy things like red that I feel kind of instantly attracted to, but when I put them on my body, I don't want to wear them. Just because you can appreciate something doesn't necessarily mean it belongs in your wardrobe and doesn't necessarily mean you're going to enjoy wearing it. Some things you love to buy and not to wear, and those things shouldn't be your wardrobe. Um, you know, if you like the color red, maybe bring it into your home decor, something which you don't necessarily are going to put on your body every day, or have it be like a little accessory or something. And you know, you do you ultimately, but if you are interested in this, by my trial and error, yeah, using the logic of it tends to work out better for me in the long term at finding clothes that I continue to want to wear. And you know, on the flip side, does it matter? It's okay to wear a color just because you like it. And if it brings you joy, you don't have to just wear colors that work for your features. It depends on what your motivations are when you get dressed every day and what makes you happy. What about olives? I like to think of your levels of red and green as one axis and your yellow and blue on another axis. Now, color seasons tends to focus on this axis. This axis doesn't really play a role. Your color season is the same whether you lean more red or whether you lean more green. And for context, olives mean lean more green and other people lean more red. Like myself, I have more red in my skin than green. By my understanding, red and green don't conflict in the same way that yellow and blue do. So for example, I can wear green even though I have lots of red in my skin and it doesn't create that nasty conflict. And similarly, if you have olive in your skin, you can wear red. So I would say almost ignore the green in your skin, focus on your other factors. What about draping? A method commonly used to find your color season is to drape colors. I would definitely recommend this over the silver and gold test or the green veins, blue veins thing. If you don't have access to this, using the logic like we have in this video is a perfectly fine way to find your color season. Draping is just a slightly quicker way. Although you do have to have a certain intuitiveness um, and like visual eye for this to be the best method for you. What you're looking for is you drape colors under your chin, hair back, no makeup on, and you're looking for your brain to do a little Ah, it's relieving for your brain to see the colors that go together. It likes harmony. And the idea is that the right colors will make your face light up and won't fight with your face for attention, which is what we want to achieve ultimately with our clothing. And when you're draping fabrics, it's important to remember if you're gonna do this at home, think about what it is that you're testing. For example, if you're testing whether you're warm or cool, you want the fabrics that you use to be the same level of light and dark. For example, I've done it before. Uh, a good test is magenta or orange. I've sometimes find that the orange I use suits me better because I'm using a lighter, softer one than the pink that I'm using. And that actually doesn't necessarily conflict with me. So you want to make sure that you're measuring the right thing. Hopefully after this video, you have a much better understanding of each of the key concepts that you need to use as tools to find your color season. And hopefully you're a little bit closer to finding where you belong in the 12 season system. There is no, this is the easy way to do this. This is just the comprehensive explanation of how this works. And hopefully you'll come away with a better idea of your features and the colors that you should be wearing. If you've enjoyed this video and you think you have found your season, you should go and watch. If this is your color season, these are your best colors for obvious reasons. Now you can find out which colors are best for you. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.